I am joined today by Rob Woodward, Director of Find Recruitment, RCSA New Zealand Council Member and Pearl Mentor for Professional Emerging Aspiring Recruitment Leaders, the mentoring program for the RCSA, and now a winner of the CEO uh, Outstanding Contribution Award for 2021. Welcome, Rob. How does it feel to be on the other side of the interview for a change? Um, well, Rena Beats. Um... Oh, a bit different after 23 years of sitting on, on that side trying to hone my listening skills. I'm, it's going to be tricky to try and get across some content, but I'm here and ready to go. Fantastic. Well, look, Rob, I'm really excited to catch you today. And I still remember our conversation that we had about your pathway to recruitment as part of the 100 Faces of New Zealand Recruitment for the Humans of NZ Rec series that we did on Instagram. So for anyone tuning in now who hasn't yet had a chance to read your awesome story, can you perhaps just tell us a bit about how you made the move from economics to recruitment? How did that happen? Oh, it's not that far, Bex, to be honest. Um, I should have known my favourite subject at uni was uh, labour economics and labour market economics. So that was probably my first inkling. Um, I was a financial engineer or an investment banker for the first nine years of my career. And uh, I was seeking a change of bank and I went to a recruiter. And the story is very similar to a lot of people I talked to. And they just looked straight through me and said, you're one of us. And I said, what do you do? And they said, well, we just go out and talk to people. And I said, yes, I am one of you. <laughs> so um, with my background of understanding labor markets, that was a help. Um, but really, I, what I would like to surface here is that when I was making the change, all my professional friends who were lawyers and who were uh, accountants really looked down on me and they said, you're going to do what? And I said, I'm going to be a recruiter. And I can tell you that I've had the most fulfilling career, 23 years on, and I, I would say I have the last laugh. I'm really enjoying it. So that's my journey. Someone saw in me that I was one of them. And we do that today. We see people and go, you're one of us. That's awesome, Rob. Look, you're very passionate about recruitment being seen as an enriching and viable career choice. And, you know, why do you think it's not seen as a credible profession like law, teaching, finance, counting? Yeah, um, and it should be. Uh, I, I think it's the barriers of entry are so low. You know, I think people have talked that all you need is a phone and a phone book. Well, that's sort of very 1980s, 90s, 90s language. But there is no... No hurdle rate to become a recruiter. Um, so I think that's why we have uh, such a range of um, ability and um, experiences uh, from our customers. I think the regulation that's coming in with on hire labor with disruption from things like Seek and LinkedIn, we're being made to lift our game. So I think professionalism with the work that you and Charles and the RCSA are doing over the last three or four years, it's coming, but I think if we really, really wanted to get on the same footing, we're going to have to create some barriers. And I'm not 100% sure on that either, but that's the reason why it's not seen the same. Rob, that's a great point. What do you think we need to do to make recruitment to be seen as an attractive career choice and linking people directly to meaningful employment? Yeah, I, I think there are some challenges here, Bex, and I I think it starts with telling some great stories and you've done some amazing work in the hundred faces of recruitment, um, which show how fulfilling and, and what journeys we've been on. Um, we've seen other professions such as the Chartered Accountant Society um, create TV commercials with accountants on crayfish boats. So I think there's more of a story to be tell about the life of a recruiter, but the leadership from Charles cascading down to the business owners like me, for me to be able to say, look, I've had a great career. And then also the leadership that are leading, you know, um, for Leela and Kimberly to Pye that are doing and showing in, 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 in labor market sectors that they, they're really crushing it and can grow meaningful careers for people. I think, that's, I think that needs to just be surfaced more and more. Great, now back to the awards and congratulations, Rob. And when Charles Cameron announced you as the winner of the Outstanding Contribution Award, you know, what, how did that feel? And it's an award that you can't actually nominate for either. Did that come as a surprise? Yeah, well, actually, I've, I've looked at the video and um, 
we, we were nominated for we had a, a applied for a couple of awards earlier in the evening um, and we were finalists but didn't make it and I possibly had one or two more drinks than I should have <laughs> not knowing there are any more awards to come so uh, what you can't hopefully see in that speech I was absolutely shocked but I was slightly tiddly too so yeah it was it was a great uh, a great feeling to sit at that you know and as he started to talk about this person I, I thought that could be me. So yeah, it was it was out of the box and, and it felt amazing for, for for find and for our industry. Awesome, Rob. And what did it mean to win the award? Look, it's you know, this is quite personal for me. It was it it meant so much. Um, you know, Bex that I lost my wife in November, and that was uh, the first month of being appointed to the board. Uh, of the RCSA Council, sorry. And I had actually talked to Charles on the awards evening, the first time I'd met him in person. And I quietly said to him, look, I'm really sorry if I haven't done enough this year, but I've had quite a stretched rubber band. And he just said to me quietly, it's all good. And I did not know any more than that. So I had um, had some journey, but still this recognition from my industry that I'd done enough was huge for me. Um, secondly, uh, I've thought of a great relationship with John Harland, who's my political adversary, and he came and gave me the biggest hug, and that was awesome. Uh, and I really, really like that. Um, and thirdly, it was it was a recognition of um, find, you know, that their front and the front and center of what I do. So. I did say it was, you know, not about me, and it's not. They were they allow me to perform the collab duties, the promotional duties. So it was it was such a such a such a special award. You're a very special human, Rob Woodward. So <laughs> thank you for sharing that and for all that you continue to do. Thank and you. look, your speech on awards night really made everyone take stock and was definitely a very emotional moment for mm. us in the audience. And you talked about how all of us as part of the RCSA community are driving professionalism and humanity. And you shared the story of someone that you hired after providing an internship experience who then went on to actually place somebody uh, as an 80 year old and deliver an outstanding experience for them and the impact that they'd had on that person. Was this something that was playing heavily on your mind in terms of that story? And, and why was that so important for you to get across? Yeah, I'd actually heard that story on Tuesday night. I think the awards were on Thursday and it was out of our Auckland office. And for some reason, it just incredibly resonated with me. You know, someone told it me over the phone. And when I reflected on it, it amplified all the themes that are really important. It was about giving a person a chance, which was our intern. It was unlocking bias, which was our age bias. We talk it about we talk a lot about this, you know, in forums and but this was a practical example. And it and we need to do more of it. And we need to talk more about what we're doing and not just within our industry, but with others. And so uh, all I can say is that it just it just amplified what we're trying to achieve in a real way. In our Kiwi collabs, Rob, you've supported a range of people on a range of issues. One that stands out for me is that uh, you continue to raise the growing importance on well-being and being kind in the workplace. Why is this an area that you feel so passionate about? Mm. And I am. I'm hugely passionate about this. Sort of three reasons here. One, um, you know, I, I lived with someone for 27 years that, you know, battled old health and that made me acutely aware of the small things you can do to make it easier for someone that's struggling, you know, and whether that's mental health or physical health or whatever, you can do little things. So, you know, they don't have to be huge things. Um, secondly, as a business owner, all we have is our people. You know, we don't have amazing machines or tech or whatever. And if we treat them with respect, and, and it just makes sense to me to listen and care, uh, you know. And then, and then finally, and I think people forget this, leaders and owners are humans too. And this is how I want to be treated and respected. You know, I think sometimes they, 
don't see, you know, because I'm an employer and not employee, but I do have a, a huge heart and this is how I would like to be treated. So why would I not treat other people the same way? So that kindness comes from my journey and from just what I know is right. What are some steps, Rob, that you think employers, employees, recruiters can Im implement to make this, you know, continue to be a priority? Yeah, look, I, I, I think they've got to listen. You know, we talk a lot about listening. And, you know, as a trainee recruiter, you're asked and, you know, to, to, to talk with your ears and listen. And I think that, um, I think businesses need to listen to their staff and ask the right questions. How are they? What do they need? You know, what journey are they on? Um, I think there are practical steps that we can take in terms of, you know, we have uh, an EAP program, we have wellness days, um, we have buddy systems. Also, you know, I think we're pretty big in supporting the community. We collect for the hospice and do other stuff. We celebrate and, and we have lots of fun. So I think that's, those sort of ingredients are key to, you know, that pathway of, of kindness and, and, and implementing some of the, the right steps towards their staff and, and customers. What are you doing at Find to help drive this conversation? Your culture at Find is lauded within the industry. We'd love you to share your secrets, Rob. Yeah. So it's so unlike Coke, we will tell you our secrets, right? So um, two or three years ago, we really started to work hard on this. We got in some external uh, advisors to help us on our purpose and our why. Um, and then we took that forward and we sort of really landed on, on, on wellness and our people function. So we, we sponsor, and tonight I'm speaking in front of 2,000 people at the Gold Awards. We're sponsoring the HR and Team Wellness Awards. Um, we have dialed back any KPIs. We treat Peter Paul as adults. We, um, our leaders are authentic. We, we honestly are generous and, and try and collaborate and help each other. So, you know, that's, that's really, we have fun. You know, that, that's our secret sauce. You know, kindness, clear purpose, community, and fun. There you go. Just copy that. All right. So at Find, you have a mantra that life is short, find stuff that matters. What matters to you? Oh, how long have you got? <laughs> So, you know, I just love life. You know that, you know, I think you've interviewed me before and, and I, you know, I just do everything. Equality is important to me. Um, respect is important to me. Being kind to others and especially kind to yourself. So they're really important things. They're, they're stuff that matters. Um, I laugh a lot. Um, I do a lot of sailing, a lot of yoga and my family is incredibly important to me. So, you know, they're the priorities. You would note that money's not in there. Um, it probably has been in the past, I'm really honest, but actually my journey has seen me, you know, really take those other things to the top. And in the next 12 months for Robin Find, what's ahead? Yeah, good question. Um, I've put down here, I'm going to write the ship of Rob. And, um, and I started that last night, actually, because I'm on six boards, um, a social impact board, an industry board, and I mentor two women uh, junior executives. And my rubber band is pretty stretched. So last night I stepped down from one of my community boards. Um, so I'm walking the walk. You know, if I talk to people about being kind to yourself, that was me last night. And the feedback I got at 7 a.m. this morning was just so impressive, totally understandable. And that's around my, my grief journey. Um, I'm uh, trying to support all our staff on this crazy post-COVID world that we're in. And, you know, we're getting staff that have five permanent jobs turned down in one week and just supporting them. That's hard. Um, and I'm trying to plan a trip overseas somewhere, anywhere. <laughs> just trying to get out of Dodge. So, yeah, that's the next 12 months for me. Well, it sounds like you've got some really um, great priorities going on there, Rob. Good on you. And why does being an, a member of the RCSA matter to you? You know, do you have any advice for people getting thinking about getting involved? 
Mm. Yeah, so I'm going to come at this with some honesty. So I was, and I had been in the industry for 23 years, and I really didn't have any touch points to the RCSA up until about six years ago, six or seven years ago. I'd seen some glossy magazines with people in black ties getting awards, but that was about it. Um, but I think uh, we decided that we wanted to enhance the professionalism of find and, and of our industry. And as we reached into the RCSA, we saw more and more that, you know, through the leadership of Charles and through UBEX, um, the integrity of it, uh, that we were just drawn to it. And the Kiwi Collabs are a highlight for me of how we can be a collaborative industry to drive forward. So I, if you've got, um, maybe an initial perception of the RCSA, come in a bit deeper and see it. It's, it's, it, it is worth it for sure. So that, that's what I'd say. I found it very rewarding. I know a business has found it rewarding. And I think if you leaned in, you'd see it. Thank you for sharing today, Rob. And look, you know, thank you for your honesty. I would expect nothing less from you. And you are now going to be in a, you know, a glossy photo for your award <laughs> night winning an award but again it's all the substance behind that award win that have made you outstanding contributor for the RCSA CEO award for 2021 um, and thank you for just sharing so many uh, great nuggets of information today and if you'd like to see Rob accept his award and his moving speech you can head over to the RCSA New Zealand Facebook page and check out the award ceremony which is still available for your viewing pleasure. Any closing words, Rob? Yeah, look, I'm going to close, close with a bit of Māori, say, um, hitangata, hitangata, hitangata. It is about the people. It is about the people. Um, what a great year. And let's let's just get through this COVID stuff and smash 2022.